Hi, I'm James Lesage, and this is my show. This week on my show, we're going to visit the aquarium, the Monterey Bay Aquarium. We're going to go to NASA, visit NASA. We've got an interview with Scott Macbeth, and we got a music video for you. This is a new series, and this is my first episode of my show. So stick around. So Maggie and I decided to get into the car and head north up Highway 1. You don't have to go too far for too long before you come to a little town called Capitola. Hey, what ever happened to that guy, That's Jim? right, I've got you on the road again. We're in Santa Cruz. We're in Santa Cruz, actually in Capitola, Santa Cruz County. Capitola is in Santa Cruz County. And as you might have read the sign, Shadow Brook Restaurant. A unique restaurant that uh, has a, uh, an elevator kind of chair. Takes you down to it because it's on the river. But uh, you have to uh, be up, up here on the path uh, to get to it. And I'm being accompanied by uh, Maggie Sullivan. Hello. There she is. Welcome to Shadowbrook. Have you ever eaten uh, in Shadowbrook Restaurant? Oh yes. Is it good? Delicious. Are you? Do you work there? I do. <laughs> oh, okay. What's your name? I'm Billy. Well, we visited you today from Monterey. So. Oh yeah. And you're on Public Access Channel 24. Do you mind? Not at all. <laughs> all right. Well, thanks for talking to us. Of course. We're at the Hyatt in Monterey, Marilyn Monroe Spa. Yeah, she happens to have her own spa right here in Monterey, it looks like. Check it out. Just a peek. Oh, you guys are open, huh? Welcome, yes, definitely are. Yeah? Yeah? Hi, Well, hello, hello. That is a great hat. Ah, I'm in the Marilyn Monroe, uh, you know, and this is uh, where uh, Marilyn Monroe would have came if she was alive today, right? Yeah, absolutely. What's your name? Megan. 
You're on public access channel 24. That's awesome. <laughs> Want to say hi, Monterey? Hi, Monterey. <laughs> there you go. Well, this looks real good, guys. All, all different. Very different. Just renovated the whole place. But some of the faces are the same. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. All right, can I let myself out this door, sir? You're sure, welcome to. Oh, okay, yeah. then I will. Sometimes I wonder what it's all about And whoa, whoa, whoa My aching heart keeps crying Girl, I miss you so I'll get you back This I know Life goes on I'm gonna try to smile again just like that old sun comes through the clouds After the rain, 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 rain The rainbow tries to show The loveliness of afterglow I'll get you back, this I know Heart keeps crying, girl. I miss you so. I'll get you back. This I know. Life goes on. I'm gonna try to smile again. Just like that old sun comes through the clouds after the rain, 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 rain. The rainbow tries to. Show the loveliness of afterglow I'll get you back, this I know I'll get you back, this I know I got you back, this I know I got you back Okay, we just met somebody walking along the beach. I just wanted to ask you, what's your name? My name is Patricia. Patricia. Yeah. Who's this guy here? This is Samuel. Yeah. Samuel. He says, I, I think one think of my of? ancestors was a harbor seal. Uh, okay. <laughs> Thanks for being on my show. Oh, my pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello, my name is Shirley Jones, also known as White Bird, my Navajo name. And my name is Scott McBeth, and my nickname he is Balu, B-H-A-L-U, which is Sherpa for bear, because I'm kind of pudgy and full of hair.
trips usually ran about a month. We walked about 200 miles and we would go as high, almost as high as 20,000 feet on these walks. And uh, walked all over Nepal, Tibet, China, ran elephant safaris in Thailand, and had an awfully nice time. <laughs> I had mostly people who were there without a dollar agenda. They were scientists, school teachers, hands-on plumbers, uh, no real estate developers, no car salesmen. <laughs> they were there for people to look at mountains. I remember one incident at a little town called Sedua, where the people that lived there were notorious for stealing things. They would steal tent ropes. Uh, they would steal your gear if you get it. And we were wary when we approached this area, wondering how we'd protect ourselves. I had had um, a mountain sickness diarrhea for several weeks when we got there, and our trip leader always would give us the anti-diarrhea preparation H. And I went to my tent and took my Pep H and got in the preparation H position, but I had forgotten to close the aperture on my tent. And these people are always curious. So I was in a position with my bare bottom sticking toward the door, and all of a sudden through the triangle of light uh, in my kneeling position, I could see a face in the door. It was a very old face, very old lady. She was a walking wrinkle. And she had a hand on her, on her head, scratching it, and her eyebrows were raised in curiosity. And she was kind of moaning. And uh, suddenly she gave a great gasp and turned around and ran across the compound to our trip leader, Lou Justan, who was one of the uh, five Americans that climbed Everest in, in, in 1963. And her name was Mingma, which is today, by the way, that's, two, that's Sherpa for Tuesday. And Mingma asked Lou, she said, Burrisa, what is this man doing in his tent? And Lou was very quick. He said, Mingma, he is performing a holy ceremony. <laughs> we call it a puja. And he is blessing your village. And your village is going to have wonderful crops for the next hundred years. Your kids will be smart and good looking, like Garrison Keeler says, above average. Well, that went out through the rest of the village in about 10 seconds. They did not steal one damn thing from us. So if ever you get in an area around your houses where you know that burglaries are happening. Go out in your driveway, drop your bitches, and show your butt to the world, and nobody will do anything to you. So. I think the most fun thing I did in creative, uh, Lou Cherstad and Stan Armington in, in Nepal, and I sat on a ridge at about 14,000 feet one summer's eve drinking chung and we were very fond of a book called The Ascent of Ramdul, which is a farce on British mountaineering. And we liked the idea of this book so much we decided to create a restaurant around it. And Stan built the damn thing. It was called the Rum Noodle Bar and Grill. And that restaurant is still there today in Tamil Bazaar in Kathmandu. And it's been, it's been mentioned in the papers, and uh, people don't know about us, but they, the restaurant's there. So that was a lot of fun. When we conceived it, we thought it would be a mountain rest restaurant, and we were going to have the men's john in another floor, and you'd have to rappel into it and jumar out, see, but the uh, regulations would not allow for that. So it's been mentioned in uh, every expedition. People go there to our bar. They don't know about us anymore, but uh, we had a lot of fun with that. So tell us your name again. Uh, Full name. My, my first name is Pierre, actually. And my middle name is Julien. And my last name is Scottish. It's 
big belt. So I'm a half breed, part French. And the full darn thing is frightfully uh, uh, <laughs> huge. It's Pierre de Saint Julien Macbeth. Well, but yeah. nobody calls me that. That's see. nice, yeah. though. That's good. Scott, or my nickname in the Sherpa language, which is Balu. <laughs> Yes, we're on Cannery Row and we're taking you into the aquarium for a little look around and a listen to some jazz. I said uh, you only have to leave your hometown for a little while before something new happens. You come back and you see, hey, there's something I haven't seen before. And it looks like it's happened. And that's why I'm talking about it. I'm going to go talk to these fellas over here. Find out what's going on. Hey, what's yeah, going on, hey. man? You okay? I, yeah, yeah, you guys all right to be on Public Access Channel 24? Yeah. This is the Great Pacific Race. We'll be rowing from Monterey Bay to Honolulu. Uh, we start June the 7th in these ocean rowing boats. Uh, there's four men teams, two men teams and solos. We're a four. Uh, we're hoping to do it in around 40 days. And uh, it's completely unsupported, so once you start, no, you can't take anything of anyone else. Wow. That's kind of risky. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, the boat's self-right, so if they come over, you'll come back up again. Okay, what's your name? I'm Nick Kempster, I'm from the UK, I'm from London. Jack Carter. Jack Carter. So, and that's yeah. Chris Blackter. Okay, so you come a long way to participate. Yeah, absolutely. We've been preparing for a year and a half as well. Oh, so, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Year and a half. Yeah. Well, because uh, cause of the cost? Uh, just the preparation. There's a lot of, lot of organization, a lot of cost. You've got to get your food, your life, life rafts, you've got to ship the boats out, uh, routing, you've got to uh, get a boat. buy the boat, navigation courses, first aid courses, sea survival courses. Wow, all that. Um, Is so that all required to, to be in this? Yeah. 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 Okay, who may, who's setting these regulations and rules? Chris Marston's the race director. Um, and he rode a few years ago from um, Japan to San Francisco. So he did wow. the whole, whole thing. Okay, so, well experienced and so this is an annual event, am I correct? No, but, it's a biannually. Um, this is the first one of its kind. Yeah, well, I think most people agree with with Maggie That's here. Spectacular, I think. Yeah, but Bri it, brilliant. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, yeah, it's something what new. What do they say in England? Brilliant? I'd say superb. <laughs> superb. Oh, <that's> superb. superb. <laughs> well, if nothing else I know in any language, it's a long lasting memory. Yeah, yeah exactly. Oh, All right, wow. guys. You really got something going. Peace. Be Thank safe, be much. safe. Yeah. Thank you.
Are you kidding me? Really? All right. Remember that uh, whoever wins this game buys breakfast in the morning. And I will break and I'll beat your butt at this pool game. Break. Look at that, brother! And as soon as I make this little one ball in the corner, I'll have another shot. What I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna, treat, I'm gonna hit the four ball, grab a little English off the bag, and if we fall down there, it's gonna be in line to, to make the next shot. You ready? Alright. One ball left, I'll call one, two, three, four, five, six banks, and then in the corner pockets, what I'll call. Six banks in the corner pocket. One, two, oh, well, hey, guess it don't count. Your shot. Well, my balls are all off the table. Hey, 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 it's time to shoot a ball. Whack away, buddy, just, just smack away. It's your shot. Anytime you want to go, man, it's your shot. Gonna sink the eight ball. There's my rocket ship back there that I've. Uh, I've got to get on there and uh, go into outer space to see if I can fix them with that pump, you know, because uh, somebody's got to do it, you know. Imagine coming back to Earth in a capsule, huh? As you can very well see, behind me is the uh, space shuttle. And this is the first time I ever seen it up close and personal like this. My name's Rad Rhonda and I work here at Space Center Houston. I do a science show about air pressure, lack of air pressure, how rocket engines work, and the best part about my show is the liquid nitrogen. I show people just how cold it is. I actually freeze flowers, limes. Uh, I show people my liquid breath. Um, oh, and the final is a graham cracker. 
that is in liquid nitrogen and then I eat it and blow smoke out my nose. I like graham crackers. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun here at Space Center. We have um, a lot of actual capsules that have flown into space, actual trainers, and we have a real moon rock you can touch. California. Okay. Hello, Monterey, California. <laughs> All right, James is about to go on a space simulated ride. Am I right? Yep. Now you gonna... can get him back safely. Okay, we well get me back safely. Where am I going? I'll we'll just go right up the stairs. Okay, this is this is scary, folks. I'm gonna be simulating me uh, going into outer space, and there's my there's my spaceship going up to my spaceship now. I'm not even in a. Uh, I don't even have a space uh, suit, but I'm in, and I'm in the spaceship now. I'm ready. I'm ready. All right. All you need to know is there's an emergency stop button up there if it gets too scary. Right up here? Where? Up here? Yeah. Emergency stop button. Hit that <laughs> button and everything stops. Initiating roll program. Holy cow. Folks, I'm rolling around. Oh, Standby God. for re-entry. Uh, upside down now. for getting me home safe. You're welcome. Well, that's the trip there. We went to Houston. Houston, uh, we didn't have a problem. All right, let's thank Mark for the ride. Hey, Mark, thanks for the, for the ride, buddy. Well, thanks for watching, folks. My show will be on next week, same time, same channel. Please tune in for this new series. Storybook time! We love Victoria's Magical Workshop! One, two, three. If I just pull on three of those ropes, they all become the same size.